Love this podcast? Support it and sponsor today. Simply head to OzCastNetwork.com for details. Bank of the West is offering the 1% for the Planet checking account. It gives back to the planet at no cost to you, and there's no monthly service charge with any deposit per statement. Only from Bank of the West. Learn more at bankofthewest.com slash 1%. Additional conditions apply. Member FDIC. The Cattlerette and Friends. From first love to happy ever after. What's that? From dating to dick pics. Oh, my. Oh, no. The Cattlerette and Friends. <laughs> Oh, I love a good dick. This podcast contains sexual references, coarse language and adult themes from the beginning and throughout. It is not recommended for listeners under the age of 15. Hello and welcome to the Cachelorette and Friends. I'm your host, Carla Anita Matiazzo. And today's guest is the co-founder of Swish Wellness and Swish by Sally. She's a TV presenter. She's a radio broadcaster and best-selling author. Uh, Welcome to the podcast, Sally Obermeter. Hi. I feel like um, I'm on a podcast with Oprah. I love that little... (laughs) It's great. (laughs) Sally, thank you for coming on. It's such a pleasure to have you, really. Such a pleasure. I'm really excited and thank you for having me. No worries, babe. to start off as with the show does the cabaret show that this uh, podcast is based on we start at crushes so can you uh tell us your first crush and the story around that part of your love life oh my first crush oh my god you take me back probably my first um, crush was probably Robin from Batman and Robin. Like I loved Robin. I know everyone was into Batman and I was like, I feel like everyone's missing the main attraction here. Robin's where it's at. So that was my kind of first, like maybe TV crush followed by like um, Chachi, you know, from like Happy Days. Mm-hmm. Like, like I loved him. And then in real life probably was at school, um, there was this really cool guy, like he kind of, he came to our school later in life. His name was Xavier. And just the fact that his name was Xavier was so like, it was like this cool guy that just wandered in. He had this like blonde hair and I was like, oh my God, where did that guy come from? You know, <laughs> so, so good looking. Um, I don't know whatever happened to him. Um, he never did dated me he dated this other super cool girl at my school um but yeah that were they were probably my first in real life and my first kind of celeb crushes with robin was it his tights that drew you to him <laughs> of course <laughs> definitely <laughs> cute so you like the supporting man really because even Chuck, she was yeah. a, bit of a supporter as well. In, uh... Yeah, he was. He was. Yeah, there's definitely a link there. Yeah, that's so true. Maybe it's like I don't like a super um, look, all the attention's on me kind of guy. Yeah, maybe maybe that's correct. Although I have dated my fair share of them, so who knows? <laughs> <laughs> oh, haven't we all? <sighs> From first crushes, I like to talk about like the teenage side of dating as like training wheels because you get to learn what you like, what you don't like in relationships uh, without the added pressure of being an adult and the expectations that come with that. So were there any highlights or lowlights in your training wheel relationships? Well, I didn't really date um, as a teenager. I kind of didn't really start dating until I was... I was kind of quite a late bloomer until my 20s. So um, I was at uni by then. Um, 
so yeah, there was kind of in my high school years when everyone else was dating, I just kind of, I don't know. I don't know if it's, yeah, boys just didn't like me. So I didn't date them. Really? I, I find got that's to so uni, hard to believe, yeah. Sally. I grew up in the hills um, in, in Sydney, New South Wales, and the boys only liked sort of blonde girls, really. And that's obviously not me. So I kind of spent most of my kind of teenage years full of angst until I got to uni and then it was a whole bright, new, um, shiny world. And it was interesting. It was a very um, big change for me because I kind of went from being super duper invisible to suddenly having all this attention. And I was like, I don't understand what happened. I mean, six weeks ago I was in 12th grade and I could, it was basically, I had been invisible. I felt like my entire kind of um, teen years. And then I got to uni and I was like, wow, how wild is this? So, but I was pretty shy. I was pretty kind of um, reticent and maybe reluctant to date because I was sort of so late to it all. It took me kind of a couple of years, even at uni before I kind of started um, dating a little bit, but dated sort of a lot post uni, like once I was out in the workforce and I had a really fun time dating just different people. Some people were like, I remember this one guy dated, he always wanted to have sports, like all the dates were sports dates. Like we should go play tennis. I'm like, I'm not that sporty. And it was like, we should go. Um, and I was like, Oh, I just like eating. I like restaurants. I like eating. I like drinking. These are the things I like to do. Like, I don't, why do I, you have to punish me by having a tennis game? And it was just, and we used to, it was funny because my girlfriends and I used to call him tennis. We used to call him tennis head. Um, and, and I would always be like, Oh, I'm meeting after work. I can't. He's like, don't worry, just grab a racket. And I'm like, I don't own a racket. I just, you know. <laughs> oh, yeah, God. So it's fun. Dating's fun, I reckon. You know, it can be not fun when you really are ready to kind of just settle down. But mm -hmm. in my early 20s and mid 20s, I definitely thought it was super fun. So, what were the standout lessons that you learned from the dating part? of your life? Did you learn some things about yourself? Did you learn some things about like what you don't want or, your, or you do want in a partner? Yeah, I definitely realized how important it was for me to actually, I guess, like that person's family, you know, uh, which was something yeah. that I never had really sort of given much thought to. But I do remember I, I dated somebody and I was like, I'm not sure I'm really vibing actually with your family, which is making me see everything in a new light, mm -hmm, you know? So I think mm -hmm. that was something that was important. Also just the importance of shared goals and a shared kind of vision was really something that I kind of learned. Like I think early in my twenties, I was thinking, Oh, it doesn't matter. And if you're heading one way and I'm heading another way, but actually as I got a bit older, I was like, Oh, there's so much to be said for having a shared um, vision of how you want to live your life. So I think they mm -hmm. were kind of the two really important things. And the other thing I really wanted was somebody who was a supporter, not somebody who was a, a like, oh, you'll never do that. And, oh, that's not possible, like a real naysayer. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, they were kind of, um, I think I realised how important that was and just somebody who could be relied upon, you know. I think I dated a few people who were a little bit flaky, you know, like, oh, be there at this time, no show. Oh, yeah, definitely I'm coming to that big event of yours, no show. You can mm. count on me for that, you know, whatever, no show. It's like, oh, hang on, this is not great. And that's just an indication that when there's bigger things that you need to rely on them for, they won't be able to step up. Correct. Yeah, totally. And look, it's probably, you know, it's funny. Sometimes I think it's probably just that I wasn't right for them in the same way that they weren't mm. right for me. They've probably gone on to have amazing relationships and be amazing partners for somebody else. You know, I mean, I have been um, with my husband for a while now and I'm sure his old girlfriends would say he was terrible, but you know, it's all about if that person's right for you. <laughs> you That's know? true. So, okay. Speaking of your husband, how did that eventuate? We were set up by a mutual friend of ours who, so I worked, for this guy Jack and he Jack I had set Jack up with a with a girlfriend of mine he said to me I'd super duper have to repay the faith this this girlfriend of yours who set me up with is so fab 
I know this great guy from when we work together. Why don't I organize drinks at my house and you guys can all meet. We'll have this kind of little party. And I said, okay, that sounds great. He said to me, he's a lawyer. And it was around the time maybe of like a few good men with Tom Cruise. And I was like, great. I can really, that really can see, can see that happening for me. And, um, and then on the night he said to me, listen, my mate, that I'm setting you up with is bringing this other maid of ours that we used to work with. And I was like, sure, whatever. Anyway, it turns out that, so I looked through the little tiny peephole, like at Jack's house, like, but they knocked on the door and I looked through the peephole to get like an early kind of scope out of the situation. (laughs) And I spun around and I said to Jack, Oh my God, the guy on the left is so my type. Oh my God, you nailed it. And then he looks through the peephole and he goes, Oh, the setups with the guy on the right. And I was like, oh, oh shit. <laughs> okay, we have, we have a problem. Um, so anyway, Marcus was the guy on the left. The guy that I was supposed to be set up with, the guy on the right, obviously I didn't, he, you know, he wasn't my type. I wasn't his type. We're all still friends to this day. We all still laugh about it. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, that's how we met. And we've been together this year. We'll be married this year, 20 years. Fuck off, Sally. That's massive. Huge. <laughs> okay. I know. That's that's huge. So my final question then is how do you sustain something that long? Like how? how? Do you know, I mean, look, we've had our fair share of rocky patches in 20 years. I don't think anyone goes through. I, I think that's just what relationships are like. They're mm-hmm. tricky. They're hard work they're very satisfying and they're very amazing when it goes well but they can be also a source of great um unhappiness when they don't go well we've definitely had our fair share of those rocky periods I think a couple of things have worked well for us one is that we and and I maybe I think I feel like I've learned this from Marcus we've both now will just let the other person evolve like there's no we don't expect you to stay in a box. It's not like, well, when I met you, you were this or did this or only like this. Like, it's like, well, we're people and we're human and we change and we move and we don't kind of expect the other person to stay where we wanted them to be, you know? And I think that's been a really big thing for us. Um, I honestly think the other thing is just effort, you know, effort. It, that's really, you know, like I would put heaps of effort into relationships with my girlfriends or my parents, even my sister. And I'll go through a period of like, Oh, be no effort with Marcus because he's just there. And I just expect the relationship to be great with no effort, but actually that's when it goes to shit, you know? So it does require some effort and that just shows you care. You know, it's not effort like in a bad way. It's like date night or making time to actually speak or, you know, just that stuff. I think it's important. maybe because we had kids later and so we'd already had 10 years and I think that's a good thing and we had already been through a lot of um harder times in the in the first 10 years so I think in a way that kind of held us in good stead but that's not to say the last 10 haven't also had their challenges I obviously was diagnosed with cancer when Annabelle was um when I was pregnant with Annabelle so that was a really really tough time Mm. but then even since that and even you know since getting um better and being recovered and stuff I mean I remember a few years ago it wasn't that long ago maybe four years ago we were not in a great place we were super like at each other and it's a combination of things you're exhausted Mm -hmm. you're you're giving everything you have to the kids the kids still young um you know um we were both at that stage um I had Swish Marcus was working partly in Swish and partly in his own business so and it's hard when you feel like there are so many demands on you and the last thing you want to do is put effort into your relationship. And I think the easiest thing to do, certainly something that I know that I'm very guilty of is I just blame Marcus on everything. So things aren't great. It's like, it's all his fault because it couldn't possibly be me. And, you know, and then sometimes it's like, well, you have to own what's yours. 
and and we're very you know we'll often say that to each other it's like I'll take what's mine but you own what's yours and and that also helps us I think to be able to go okay let me take a step back okay here's what's mine here's what here's you know where I feel like I am unnecessarily blaming projecting any of that kind of shit that can happen and I take back the stuff that's not yours this is my bit and this is your bit and you know let's try and meet in the middle and also there's also something to be said for once you've aired whatever it is you're upset about how do you just move forward like because if you're constantly going to look back and be like yeah but that time because I'm I love this right like in 1996 you said (laughs) you know and I've got my book of like grievances that I'll never let go of you know and Marcus has said to me, you know, it's like, don't worry. Like that was before, like, who cares? Like I never mentioned stuff from five years ago. And I was like, Hmm, that's a good point. And I wouldn't do it with a girlfriend either. Like, yeah. I, like with girlfriends, I like, it's like, whatever we're in this for the long haul. We're besties. We're right or die. We just, it doesn't matter. But somehow in relationships, I'm like, no, that one time when I took the bin out more than you, that one time when, you know, and I keep score. And yeah. I like, what the fuck am I keeping score? Do I'm going to stop doing that. The reason why I think it is, is that um, usually our relationships that are closest to us, which um, can often be um, our husband, wife, whatever, can be a mirror to the trauma and the stuff that triggers you. Whereas, totally. Yeah. Whereas, like, girlfriends and stuff like that, you see them for certain increments of time and they don't necessarily hold up a mirror to you to trigger your traumas. Totally. So triggering. So then, of course, you just retaliate. Cause it's like, it's yeah. like, let me, let me lash out. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much, Sally. This has been brilliant. I'm so grateful that you've come on the podcast. Oh my God. Such a joy, honestly. Thank you. And thank you for such a refreshing podcast. Oh, thanks darling. That's really kind. You've given some wonderful insights that I know I'll take on board if I ever get into a relationship again. And I'm sure the listeners will take those lovely lessons as well on board because they were very constructive and very helpful. Thank you. Thanks darling. If you subscribe on patreon.com slash the catch Lorette pod, you get early access to episodes, not to mention keeping the pod alive for as little as a US dollar a month. Subscribe now. Patreon.com slash the catch Lorette pod. to catfish and sex toys. Oh, wow. The catch and red and friends. See you next time if you dare. Bank of the West is offering the 1% for the planet checking account. It gives back to the planet at no cost to you. And there's no monthly service charge with any deposit per statement. Only from Bank of the West. Learn more at bankofthewest.com slash 1%. Additional conditions apply. Member FDIC. Love this podcast? Support it and sponsor today. Simply head to oscastnetwork.com for details.